There are road trips and then there are epic road trips and we're going to tell you about an epic road trip that lasted 14 months. A mom, a dad, four kids, they had never been in an RV before. You are going to love this story. Coming up on episode 367 of the RV Podcast. Welcome, fellow travelers. It's time for another episode of the RV Podcast. Answering your questions, sharing tips, suggesting great trips and off-the-beaten-path adventures, and always staying on top of the RV lifestyle news you need to know about with great interviews and inside industry information. Here's your hosts, award-winning journalists Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer Hello, Michael, and hello, everybody else. And here we are outside enjoying the nice weather, and we've even got Bo under the picnic table Bo. watching all the action Bo at is the campground. Like, Bo is like a troll underneath there, having a good time. He's not quite his... sure what's going on, but he's staying under the picnic table. We are coming to you on location uh, this week, and we'll have more about that in just a second. But uh, uh, really excited about the interview of the week. We've had so much fun. Uh, in recent podcasts, profiling different groups of RVers and the, the couple that you're going to meet in today's episode, they're awesome. They're from California and they just finished a 14 month road trip with their four kids and they have so much to teach us about planning, about, about how our, the RV lifestyle will bond a family and bring you close together. But I think what Sarah said that was so important is the necessity, the necessity of uh, planning, how she planned for two years before they did this trip. Both of them, they wanted it to be a good memory. Yep, and uh, we could learn a lot from that, Jennifer and I, about planning. Uh, we, we just love it. You'll meet Scott and Sarah coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we are on location. We're coming to you today from the Riverview RV Resort, and we are right on the banks of the Mississippi River. Absolutely fabulous time of the year to be here. The river is beautiful. The weather is just cool enough at night to sleep in comfort and warms up in the 70s in the daytime. We will be here all week with a group of uh, about 60 of our RV Lifestyle supporters from our Facebook uh, supporters group and members uh, who are uh, helping support us from our YouTube RV Lifestyle community. They're all coming. We're going to hang out together, do a lot of socializing, some great eating, <laughs> touring, learning history, and just having fun together. If you don't know about our members and our supporters group, uh, just go to rvlifestyle.com slash members. We'll put it in the description uh, and the show notes, and you can uh, find it there. But uh, we can't wait. They're all coming uh uh, on Monday and we're gonna stay right through Thursday all of us together but great part we were here I think it was May we were here and it was fun it was fun in May we liked it so much that we wanted to tell other people about it this is delightful if you like watching barges and you enjoy just sitting there watching the mighty Mississippi River I strongly suggest this park and it's perfect right now because there aren't any bugs no bugs uh, not too hot we got here just before the gathering began and uh, watched some hot air balloons they have a balloon festival this time every year down here in uh, Natchez on Natchez Mississippi it's right across the river from us and we watched them this morning there was a a little bit of fog on the river as the sun came out and you know that that coolness of the air and the warmth of the water and then the blue sky the sun came and then all these hot air balloons it was just it was just gorgeous uh, it's kind of like uh, they're all going home now most of the as we record this they're all going home the people who are here for the weekend of the of the balloon festival and it's got to be like those old wagon trains out west everybody's breaking camp moving yep. out yep friendships made old friendships renewed. You can follow uh, what's happening down here on our uh, meetup on the Mississippi. There'll be a lot of people posting pictures and videos and all the fun uh, on the uh, RV Lifestyle Facebook group. And that's rvlifestyle.com slash Facebook. Uh, 73,000 plus members. If you're not a member of the group, join it. You can get all your questions answered. You'll learn a lot. And again, we'll have a link to how you can uh, uh, not only join the group, but you can also be a supporter of uh, Jen and I. And that's who we're meeting with now. We try and do a couple of supporter member meetups like this uh, every year. And 
they're going to get some great prizes. We've been collecting <laughs> prizes, and we really have some awesome prizes. Uh, I don't want to give it away, but they'll all be here when they hear the podcast. We're giving away a, a $500 cell phone booster. We're giving away tire minder, tire pressure monitoring systems, GPS units, uh, saw starts, all sorts of things. So anyway... Uh, you can find out about that. Now, how are you going to keep up with this? This is the first time we've done a gathering like this. What are you going to give away next time? Well, you know, over the year we get all these products that people send us to review. And so instead of just uh, letting them gather dust, we put them back in their boxes and we'll give them away as prizes and stuff. So it's great. Um, on the way down, we had a lot of fun. We stopped at a place in Kentucky called Big Bone Lick State Park. Now, we've been there before long time ago, years ago. Years ago, and we didn't have time to really explore it. But this time, we took the time <laughs> to enjoy what it has to offer, and I think it should go on your bucket list. Yeah, it's uh, if you're in paleontology, uh, not dinosaur bones, but mammoth bones, mastodon bones, uh, uh, an extinct species of bison called great bison uh, that used to be in North America, uh, and history, if you're interested in the Lewis and Clark uh, adventures, um, they played a pivotal role at Big Bone Lake, Bone, Big Bone Lick State Park. Say that ten times fast. It's hard. <laughs> uh, and we will have a video on that in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so that was fun. But well worth the stop. I'm so glad, because normally we always got to get from point A to point B, and we made some time to stop there, so you make some time to stop there, too. Yes. Only 62 campsites. A little bit close together, but worth the sight. Oh, it's a it's a great 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 spot. And then, and, and uh, also when you go there, we say there are, are bison there. There's a herd of about 15 there. So if you've been out Yellowstone, where you've seen massive herds, but it's still great for the kids and for everybody to see the bison. Yep. And should we ask them the test about bison or buffalo? Yes. You know the difference? Do you? You want to tell them? Well, bison's live in North America. Uh, the buffalo. other buffalo live in Asia and, and Africa. Africa. So don't call them buffalo. They're <laughs> bison. <laughs> bison are very sensitive about that. So be politically correct for our bison friends. Uh, the other thing we did, uh, which was really fun, is we left Big Bone Woodluck State Park and we went to Middle Tennessee. We were invited down uh, by the folks uh, who uh, are developing uh, an RV community, I think it'll be a community, uh, of multi-acre RV lots. Actually, they're lots. You can build a house on them if you want. It's called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. And we explored that. We got an ATV. First time we put Bo in an ATV, he Bo loves loved it. it. Yep. For a creature that doesn't like the bumps when we ride down the road in our RV, the ATV, he was all for it, if he sat in the front seat. Bo, he's a front seat kind of guy. Front seat, sitting between us, looking out the window. He was happy, he was thrilled. I guess he's just not a back seat dog. Can't he, blame him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, he had a great time, ATV, and we were really impressed with this, uh, this property. It's beautiful. And uh, we put together, uh, this is their commercial, because uh, uh, they're a sponsor of, of, our, of us now. They're myrvland.com. And uh, they have a special event coming up on October 30th of 2021 where they're going to introduce this for the first time to the public. And uh, here's the uh, commercial version of what we saw. There is a big event coming up just west of Nashville, Tennessee for RVers on October 30th. Tennessee Land and Lakes is selling off a 1,500-acre estate known as the Woodlands at Buffalo River in large acreage properties from 5 to 126-acre parcels. Unlike most properties, these are virtually unrestricted, allowing year-round RV living in an incredibly natural setting. It's like owning your own state park your property, your way. There's high speed fiber optic internet available, wooded trails and big views surrounded by the most popular destination spots in Tennessee, like Nashville, Kentucky Lake and the Buffalo River. The pricing is phenomenal for this area. Six acres, only $69,900. 20 acres, 89,900. 35 acres, only $149,900. There's even great financing. Take a video tour, get the details on the website myrvland.com. 
It's time to start thinking about prepping for the off-season. And whether you own an RV, a travel trailer, or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help you protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protected from UV rays. Listeners can receive free shipping and 60% off the original price of their cover order. Visit empirecovers.com slash RV lifestyle or use the promo code RV60 at checkout. Empirecovers.com. Protect what you love. Welcome back, everybody, to our interview of the week, and our guests are Sarah and Scott LaBasse, and I know you're going to love this interview. Yeah, we uh, talked to them uh, the other day. They are back now from a 14-month epic road trip, and as Jennifer said at the beginning of this uh, podcast, uh, what we found so impressive was the planning that they, that they did. Now, we're kind of serendipity folks. We like serendipity. There's a place for it. But we learned a lot about how important it is to plan, to make the most of every opportunity, and also how uh, camping and RV travel can really bring a family together. And uh, boy, they have a great story to tell. They do, and all the planning that they did, because they wanted, they knew that their oldest boy would be going off to college, and uh, they wanted some good family memories. And boy, did they make them, as you'll hear in our RV Lifestyle Interview of the Week. We're joining us now, Scott and Sarah, and uh, back from the trip, we are delighted to have you guys with us today. I can't yeah. wait to hear about your 14-month uh, adventure. Yeah. So tell us, uh, we kind of highlighted a little bit in the intro, but tell us about this. What gave you the idea to do it? Uh, had you had a lot of RV experience, and, and what was this trip all about? So... We decided about two years before COVID even hit that we wanted to take our family on the road before they grew up and left the nest. And so Scotty came to me and he said, what would you think if we toured the U.S. for a year? And I said, okay, let's do it. So after some research, uh, we got a good idea of what we needed to do. So just so you know, before we started this trip, we did not own a trailer. Really? <laughs> we did not. I drove a minivan and Scotty drove a Prius. Yep, in California, the, the <laughs> typical scenario, minivan yeah. and Prius. So we sold my minivan. We bought a F-350 Dually that was my truck to drive around town. <laughs> yeah. And um, we researched for about a year and a half um, on trailers and trucks and where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do. And literally, just props for you guys, I listened to your podcast every week during that time and I learned things that I did not need I needed to know and I got answers to questions that I knew I had and as questions arose you guys answered every question if I had a different question I would email you and I got information so I I owe you guys we owe you guys the uh, information our well, trip went smoothly because of the information that we got while researching so thank you guys well thank you but look here you are being interviewed on the podcast as experts so <laughs> <laughs> it worked so i i got to go back to this thing they never were RVers before scott how did you get the idea you wanted to do this no all i knew is that we needed to get out and travel the country we didn't know if we were going to do it in an rv a fifth wheel a trailer um if we were going to tent camp or a hotel or whatever so we just decided to go, as Sarah said, figure it out and do some research and figure which would be the best for our scenario. We knew we wanted to be out for at least a year. And we knew we wanted, we knew the time frame because it was our oldest son's junior year in, in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. So allowing him to come back for his senior year and everything that goes along with that. So we did all that research and I've driven some trucks and a little bit of trailer driving, but backing up and all the other nuances that go along with pulling a big giant fifth wheel, we had no idea. So we turned into truck drivers overnight. A lot of trial and error. <laughs> yes, we did. In fact, the joke is, so Scotty had to work while we were on the road. So I did a good amount of driving. 
So the joke was when we got home that I was going to be a semi truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you guys had planned this pre COVID, then COVID, COVID hit. And of course, yes, you sir. live in California, one of the most restrictive states, period. Yep. Did you ever think that maybe this was going to be delayed or canceled because of COVID? Yeah, for a brief moment, we had a lot of people telling us it wasn't going to happen. We wanted to rent our house out while we left, and we had people telling us that it wasn't going to work. And together, we, um, you know, we definitely felt inspired that we needed to go, no matter what everybody else was telling us. And so we put our house on the market, and within one day, we had 50 to 100 people interested, <laughs> and within three days, we had a renter. Yeah. We had a renter, and they were fantastic. And we did all, all the interviews. All the interviews and everything was done just virtually. We didn't yeah. really meet anybody until the a couple of families that we chose to come in. But it was an interesting thing, as Sarah said, everybody was a naysayer. It's not going to work. COVID hit. You're not going to rent your house out. You're not going to find it. We still had to buy a trailer, in fact. <laughs> I had purchased a truck a few months before, but we still had to find a trailer, the one that we wanted. We knew which one. We just didn't know where to find it. So it all worked out swimmingly. It, it, it worked out literally step by step, was laid out in front of us, and all we had to do was do it. And so we bought the trailer. We even left a week earlier because the kids weren't in school anymore because of COVID. So we left early. And we, I homeschooled the whole time that we were out, and it was fantastic. Um, so we got on the trip and we had, and by the way, she had never homeschooled before either. No. I was going to just ask, you know, the term is road schooled these days. <laughs> and now you're an expert in that too. <laughs> it was so wonderful because we were learning about us history and then we got to go walk through the civil war sites and we got to go through Boston, Massachusetts on the freedom trail. We walked through Gettysburg and Vicksburg, and literally, we were studying it and feeling it as we were walking through it and seeing it. It was incredible. The education alone was worth every bit of preparation to get us out. It was incredible. Tell us about this trip now. You, you left when, and where did you go? And uh, I got to ask, were there bumps on the road those first few days? Oh, yeah, we had, I'll tell you this, so Sarah can explain the preparation where we went, but two weeks into our trip, we're in Frisco, Colorado, and our family is, part of the, the activity list that we had included on this included mountain bike parks, skateboard parks, BMX parks, mm -hmm. really kind of high octane, high adrenaline activity. Our kids are like that. And two weeks into our trip, we were at a, a mountain bike park in Frisco, Colorado, our oldest son, who was, I think he was 16, he had just turned 16, he fell, a big fall, got a big concussion, knocked himself out, broke his clavicle. He had to spend the night in the emergency room that was right across the way. So, and the trailer, we didn't even, didn't even have parked at a campsite at the time. We were parked at a parking lot. So we stayed the night in the parking lot. Sarah and my oldest son spent the night in the emergency room. And that sort of sets the pace for the rest of our trip with a, a few more bumps and bruises <laughs> along the way. <laughs> but fortunately, our son was so kind in Frisco, Colorado, and he helped us to meet our deductible for the rest of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> one, one instant, just like that. Just like that. So as far as the trip goes, we <laughs> left the end of the day, and we, were, we came home August of the next year. So we left in, uh, the end of May 2020. And we came home August 2021. And we basically did a figure eight across the United States to miss winter storms and to miss certain weather, um, to make sure we caught fall going down the East Coast. It was incredible. Um, so we hit 46 states with our kids. We did 33 national parks, which wow. national wow. parks are the of our country. Mm -hmm. We did all the major bucket list things like um, Niagara Falls, um, snorkeling in Key West. We did um, the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. We dug for <laughs> diamonds in Arkansas. Crater, crater uh -huh. <laughs> and we sifted for sapphires in Phillipsburg, Montana. We, we, we rode our bikes through Manhattan as right. a crazy family, all on our bikes in a line for all the crazy <laughs> across the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge. 
Yeah, we, we did were, some pretty wild stuff. Mount Rushmore. Mount we, Rushmore. Sarah and I did a an almost eighty mile bike ride through Mount Rushmore through a Crazy Horse Monument Custer. back through the Black Hills and Custer State Park. So we did a lot of fun stuff out there. You, you yeah, sure did. Now was- you are are both. Uh, active i know uh i see in your email 50 marathons by 50 is that a goal that's, she's only 20 that's she's right. years <laughs> Wait, so you got a long time to go it yeah yeah the goal is 50 by 50 and i've ran 34 marathons but unfortunately the last three years i've been i've had a couple different injuries so i'm just biking and waiting till i can run again so i have 16 left to do and it's gonna get done we're doing this so yeah we're that's very true. active and it's not two of us so scotty mountain bikes and road bikes and our boys we have three boys and one daughter and they all are very active biking hiking wrestling they do sports they i mean you name it they do it (laughs) the the funny the one of the funniest stories i like to tell is we went to 50 some odd skate parks no it was like 58 skate parks across the u.s yeah so in the skateboard park world (laughs) <laughs> they don't necessarily like or look kindly to Californians. So we would pull up with this big giant truck with a California license plate. Six people pile out. Sarah's got her rollerblades. My little daughter has her rollerblades and then scooters and skateboards and bikes. And all the kids kind of, you can tell in the face, like, oh, great. All these people are showing up to our park. They're from California. They got little kids that are going to get in our way. This is going to be a not good time. So we start going around the park and whatnot. And pretty soon my uh, our middle son is doing like a 360 crazy trick out of the bowl and doing backflips on his scooter. And then all of a sudden, all the locals are like hooting and hollering. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then we're all brought into the fold and we're all in. We're all cool now. We're all That's how it was in 60 plus skate parks all yeah. across America. Yeah. Oh, it was my pretty goodness. Fun. You know, I could so, tell one uh, thing why you guys are successful. And do, do you see how you took. Uh, particularly the accident in stride, you know, you just rolled with it and made it, made it something to tell a funny story about. Uh, yeah. Tell us more about the, this trip. Okay. I'm going to tell you a really funny story that helped us learn a lot. Um, one of our stops was in Colorado Springs, Col- uh, right? Yeah. Colorado Springs. Colorado. For some reason that sounded wrong because our second son would actually like to go to the Air Force Academy there. And the intention was to do a school tour, right? But due to COVID, we weren't able to do the tour. So one of the activities we did in the area was to drive up to the top of Pike's Peak, which is absolutely gorgeous. If you've done that, it's worth the drive up. We have, we have, yes. It's so beautiful. So we actually did it on a day that we weren't planning on doing it. So in other words, we weren't totally prepared um, in the sense that we planned to go to the gas station before we did the ascent. But... um, (laughs) When we got to the gate to enter into Pike's Peak, the lady said it's 19 miles to the top and 19 down. And we looked at our gas gauge and it said we had 60 miles left. So we thought, okay, piece of cake. You know, 19 down, go to the gas station. So we go. We're like, let's go. Um, As we were driving, we started to ascend and we saw that as we increased in our elevation, that the gas was decreasing at like 10 times the normal rate. And we were watching it go from 60 to 55, to 50, to 45, and we'd only gone a couple of miles. And we kind of looked at each other like, oh, no, what is going on here? <laughs> we just kept going because that's what we did. We just kept going. <laughs> By the time we got to the top of Pike Peak, you guys, we had two miles left in our But gas. it's all downhill <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> that's what we yeah. thought. We thought, okay, we're good. We have this <clears throat> big diesel. Oh, no, you got to use your engine. Yeah. <laughs> So Scotty and I look at each other like, well, let's just go have a good time. You know, and there's the rumor, go eat the donuts. They're delicious. And by the way, they were not very good. So we went, <laughs> we went up to the top and we enjoyed the view and took pictures and the kids ran around and it was just so beautiful. We really enjoyed the top. And then when we realized it was time to go, then kind of the panic set in like, okay, what are we going to do? Uh-oh. And Scotty and I decided that we were going to put the truck in neutral, you know, use the, the brakes and try and go down the well, hill. Right, through, right as we pulled out of the parking lot, as soon as I pulled out, it was down to zero. Oh, right. So we were, oh, we oh. already. This is not our brightest moment, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we start descending and Scotty's using his brakes and probably about four miles down, there's a brake check where they stop you and there's a convenience store, you know, and so we get down there and she checks our brakes with her little laser thing and Scotty asked her, so what's the average brake um, temperature? And she said, maybe in the 200s, right? Is that yeah, what she 200, said? Yeah. 200. And Scotty goes, well, what's that? She goes, 750. <laughs> uh, they were pretty hot. <laughs> She goes, you guys have to pull over. You're not allowed to go down this hill. And yeah. sorry, our phone is ringing. Um, and so we pulled over and Scotty said to her, you know, we, we ran out of gas. By any chance, do you have gas? She goes, oh, yeah, I have gas. And we're like, yeah. And, she goes, and Scotty goes, oh, is it diesel? We have to have diesel. She goes, oh, no, I just have regular gas. <laughs> so then we're like, okay, panic, panic, panic. Long story short, we sat there and we talked to people and we tried to figure it out. Eventually, Scotty went up to the line that was waiting to come down to the brake check and he saw a man in a diesel truck and, you know, they rolled down their window and Scotty talked to them and said, hey, we're kind of in a jam here. We ran out of gas. By any chance, do you carry extra gas? And the man goes, oh, yeah, I have like 30 <laughs> gallons in the back of my truck. Oh, still do you No, it was. So keep in mind, it was getting, it was, it was almost dark. Right. They're about ready to shut down. There's fear of tow trucks and fees and fines. Being, <laughs> they don't let anyone stay on the mountain and yeah. I'm just beside myself. And, and we have our four kids with us. We too. have our four yeah. kids with so, us. So Bradley was his name. And Bradford. He, oh, Bradford. Yeah, Bradford. Sorry. Bradford pulled next to our truck and he sat there and filled us up. And I can't tell you how many pictures I was taking of him. <laughs> our angel of the day. Filling up our truck, oh. and we were so grateful. And so we learned a couple things there. Number one, carry extra gas. Number two, <laughs> go fill up your gas tank. Like <laughs> when it's halfway empty, that's when it's empty. You go fill it up. So we learned that one the hard way, but that's what we do now. And number three, wow. that people, people in America are amazing. You guys, we had so many angels help us in so many situations, but specifically in this situation, we were stranded. We were stuck. And he was our angel and, and not even hesitating. He came and he helped us. And he was so bright and shiny and he was our angel for the day. And we learned through this experience and so many others, Americans are fantastic and service oriented and wonderful. And they're there to help. Every time we had something happen, there was someone there to help us. And we I love them what I love so much about your story is, uh, is just that, is what you discovered out there. I mean, if you listen, if you read social media and the news, you would think that everybody is at each other's throat until you get in an yeah. RV and start camping and see in our country. And I'm so glad to hear that. Um, you also found a lot of help from the community, right? You were able to, particularly our Facebook group, you got on the RV Lifestyle Facebook group and asked questions and were people helpful there? Yeah, a quick story is in our itinerary, I had our itinerary 100% planned before we even set out. I had it done by November before COVID even hit, meaning I had every stop, every campground. I knew where every airport was, what we were going to do just because I was, I didn't know how this was going to work. It was flexible, meaning if we needed to do something, we could, but I also had our campgrounds planned out six months in advance. And that was just an intuition that I felt like I needed to do. And I know that that's one of the sensitive things going on right now, because you can't just fly by the seat of your pants anymore. And I just felt super grateful because our trailer was a 44 foot long fifth wheel. And we can't just go and boondock anywhere. We needed places to be. And so I made sure we were safe and had what we needed. Anyways, so, um, what was I saying? Learning through the Facebook group. Oh, the Facebook yeah. group. So I had plans to go to Canada for two weeks because we, um, Scotty has family in Canada. And they, I followed your podcast and your group religiously, the news specifically, because I was watching to see if they were going to open so we could go. And when I eventually found out, you know, realized they are not going to open, we can't go. We had two weeks in our itinerary that we had nothing. So I got on your Facebook page and said, hey, guys, we're going to be here. We need to be in Yellowstone by the end of these two weeks. Oh, we were coming from Glacier, Glacier to Arizona, uh, Yellowstone. Are there any ideas of where you guys think we should go for two weeks? And I don't remember the name of this sweet lady, but there were lots of ideas. But one lady specifically said, you need to go to Phillipsburg, Montana, because you can dig for sapphire gems. And they yes. have the world's 
candy shop. And I was like, done. So through the help there, we rerouted our itinerary and we um, went to Phillipsburg and we had so much fun there. And it was wonderful. And then we were able to get back to Yellowstone and back into our itinerary. So, and that was only one example of when the Facebook wow. group actually helped me. Now, okay. Scott, you said you were able to work from the road. Did you have to work that much or what do you do? Yeah, yeah. Full-time job, so I work for an, a, an IT company and I run a engineering sales engineering team. So I had to work every day like normal and accommodate for the different hours and the different time zones we were out and whatnot. But I I did a lot of I was on video calls every single day, just like we're doing now, and phone calls all the time. And I had to have strong internet connection everywhere I, I was at. As you know from anyone who. Uh, goes RVing the campsite our Wi-Fi's don't always work that well <laughs> so we had th I had three carriers I had a cell phone booster I had a wine guard that does Wi-Fi and uh, data from a sim card and we had our cell phones as well so it seemed to work everywhere except for two spots out of the I think we were in about 90 campsites or so throughout the whole trip only two of them I didn't get a good signal one way or another so, yeah, yeah I've got a uh, couple of other quick questions. Uh, you, you're back home. Uh, your son's in his senior year. Uh, where's the RV? Which are, are you still? Are you done? Did you been there, done that? What is your plans? We're actually going to sell the RV, but it's in. We do always want to have a trailer at this point. We'll always want to be able to get out and go on the road anytime mm -hmm. we can. It's being repaired right now. I was driving to. Um, <laughs> the coast of California in Northern California about San Francisco. And I hit a tree and so I Ooh. tore a hole in the, just so you know, when I drove, I only hit one stop line that I completely knocked out. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> All that practice as a truck driver. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I hit the tree so you, and put a hole in it. It didn't bend anything. It just ripped the membrane. So that's getting repaired right now. They're replacing the roof. So, and behind and with you. Our, oh yeah. Yeah, behind you are the magnets you've collected, right, from the trip? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, all the different places, Mount Rushmore, this is Badlands, volcanoes in Hawaii. We did go to Hawaii for two We years. didn't take the trailer to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> yeah. That would have been great. Yeah, that, that was good. It was fun. So you've shared so many fun stories and memories, but uh, a couple of quick uh, lessons you've learned that you would pass along to yourself if you could talk to yourself 14 months before you know or to other people who say i want to do that too uh scott what, what comes to your mind with, with that here's what i would say and go along the lines of what sarah said the people in the united states are just fantastic mm -hmm. for the most part um, i would determine what you're good at and what skill you have and what you have to offer and be prepared to offer that and i'll give you an example um I, I tried to be prepared with anything that I thought would happen, flat tires and that type of thing. Obviously, the gas thing, <laughs> how, how that slipped my mind, I don't know. But we're driving in the desert of Palm Springs, out towards Palm Springs, and four college students in a, in a beat-up car got off to the side of the road, and they had a big flat tire, and no one was stopping to help them. So we're pulling our big four-to-four-foot fifth wheel, and there's hardly a shoulder, but we pulled over. My son and I grabbed all the tools, the jack, everything, because we had it all. And we went and changed their tire for them and got them on, on their way. And um, we knew how to do that. We had the tools, so we did it for them. And strangely enough, someone had done that for us mm -hmm. when we were in Chicago and got a flat tire. I wasn't pulling the trailer at the time, but I didn't have the tool to lower the spare from our truck. Somehow the truck didn't have it, and so we were kind of stranded. And we pulled up to a hotel. And a gentleman that was a construction worker in the city who was just out, you know, enjoying his peace before he hit the sack for the night. He had an F-150. And while the kids and Sarah went up to the hotel room, he and I spent the next two hours just chatting and talking and perfect strangers, nothing in common. But he helped me change the spare and he let me use his tool and we were off on our way the next day. So Pay it forward. it's really did cool. That. Uh, yeah. The fact Word, yeah. So yeah. be prepared. That would be my thing. Be prepared to pay forward with any skill or talent that you may have in whatever way you could do that. 
And actually, our son, who was 14 at the time, the boys that they changed the tire for, they said, what can we do? Can we pay you? And our son said, no, no, no. Just well, they, pay it They offered us an open bottle of some alcohol. We don't drink Yeah, alcohol. we don't drink. So we said, oh, no, thank you. And our son said, just pay it forward. Yeah. And yeah. that was pretty incredible. Wow. So, yeah. I would think one lesson I was thinking of is when we decided to go, we didn't just go. We spent time educating ourselves. Um, so that when we went out, we had a good idea of what we're doing. We met so many people on the road who just went and they didn't know exactly what they were doing. And we saw many problems with how they were hooking up or how they were leveling or how they were, you know, just different things. And we just, so we were grateful that we were able to have the time to do the research and find the information. And I would think another advice I would give myself would be, um, be prepared, have a plan but also make sure there's a good percentage that's flexible so that yeah. when things happen, you can change that plan on a dime, you know, but, and the other, so be flexible. The other thing is be very organized in what you're doing. When you go out, you need to organize your pictures, your itinerary, your, you know, <laughs> madness, <laughs> your, organized in such a small space was what helped us have more peace was, you know, in the trailer, living in the trailer, was the organization wow. helped a lot. And I, what I thought of right away when you first started was that not to let the negative people stop you from your dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. I think that you, you can listen to what the news and people are saying, but you have to decide what you're going to take in your life and what you're going to believe and what you're going to do. I'll, I'll tell you this, yeah. people said we were crazy oh we got and people crazy. from our church friends people we've known for a long time yeah we were crazy but as we came back those same people said you were inspired yeah just because we left during COVID, our kids did not miss school they didn't miss sport and in california everything was shut down yeah so why their yeah. friends were doing nothing kids were exploring uh -huh. the entire country it was pretty well, you, one, one great big field trip yeah it, that's what it was yeah. it was incredible so maybe well i am my life uh, I am so yeah. glad that you guys are going to stay in the RV lifestyle. You're just going to get a different trailer. <laughs> and, and the reason I'm glad is because we would love to camp next to you guys and spend some uh, more time around a fire. Uh, both uh, Scott and Sarah are regulars on the RV lifestyle Facebook group. And I'm sure you guys, people are going to be uh, uh, talking about this after we uh, post the podcasts and the links and all that stuff. Uh, I have one last question. You might have one. Um, but you took, I know, I saw in a note, 27,000 photographs, you said. I did. That's not hyperbole? I, you, <laughs> you really took that many? I yeah. took so many pictures. You want to grab one of my books? Yeah. So he's going to grab one of my books. What I didn't know back here, <laughs> what I did was I did a blog. And everyone kept telling me, do a YouTube channel, do something. But my main focus was my family. It was not spend 40 hours on a YouTube channel. So I just did a blog where every single day in the trip, I put pictures and described what we did. And then now, so all my pictures are organized on the blog and now I print them and into books. Oh, so, that's awesome. Great. So Is now that what? How our, many do you have? Okay, that's the, the funny part. I thought, so I'll just tell you this, when she, when she uh, had this idea, I thought, oh, we'll have a three or four books on a coffee table. So, so far I've printed 10 of these books and it only covers the, it only covers the first three months. We're going to have so, an encyclopedia. Book. I have to make a bookshelf just for me. I don't care how many it is. We are not going to forget any of those memories. The whole thing no. is completely printed. And so as far as where the pictures are, they're all organized on my computer. And we have one of those hard drive that we yeah. just put it on to get it all off my And you know computer. what you know the title of this one. Oh, we got to tell you the title of our trip. The Skate Partition Across the Nation. That's Skate Partition Across the Nation. Sounds like a great little song that we had to make. Well, we you got another more questions for him? Any more feedback? No, this was just so much fun. I can't tell you how you've encouraged us because you say in a small way that we encouraged you to do this. Yeah. So that makes me really happy to, yeah. make, to get you guys Oh my gosh. To help yeah. You do your dream. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were our godfather and godmother. Like literally well, I remember I was getting a house ready to sell it and I was listening to you guys while I'm working, learning and asking questions to myself. And so a big of all oh. the information pretty much was 
Thank you. Well, you <laughs> have now inspired us. We're taking off tomorrow for a couple week trip and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll handle, uh, handle that trip uh, with uh, a little glow of uh, encouragement that we got from you as well. All of our listeners. Yeah. You just, you just have to roll with it. Whatever happens, you roll yeah. with it. Cause that's life. Yeah. There's the bumps in the road. And every day is a gift, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know? And we're able to pay it forward. What you guys have done for us. We've really tried to encourage and educate other people whenever they ask us. And, and yeah. honestly, I think other people that we've met that have, been in the RV world, they pay it forward too. They realize that people have helped them along the way and they, they have that same attitude. Yeah. Um, well, well, we will have you back again after you get your new trailer and you head out. And uh, uh, just thank you for sharing your adventure with all of our audience. You guys have been delight. Uh, Scott and Sarah Labasse, thank you guys so much for being our guests. Thanks, yeah. Jen. Bye, Mike and Jen. I told you you'd like uh, meeting that couple. Isn't that great? Uh, we could have talked for two hours. It was so much fun to hear their story and, and what great memories they made. Yep, they did. Uh, so thanks to Scott and Sarah and uh, their family for sharing their story with us on RVLifestyle.com. If you have uh, somebody that we should profile, we would love to, love to know about it. So just drop us a line. We, you can reach us at Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Stay with us. We've got the news of the week coming up next. All RVers need specialized emergency transportation coverage to cover air and ground ambulances, return to home services, and vehicle return. You only have a 68% chance that those services will be completely covered by your major medical. The sad reality is that a lot of people believe they have that coverage, but it turns out most carriers that claim to cover air ambulances only cover you for a hospital-to-hospital -hospital transfer and offer no coverage to get you to the initial hospital in the first place. The truth is 68% of air ambulances are hospital-to-hospital. -hospital. Here's a map of all the places in the U.S., that getting to the hospital in the golden hour is not possible without an air ambulance. And with an average cost of $52,481 for an air ambulance, why would you take the risk? Go to peaceofmindforrvs.com today and take a look at the true emergency transportation coverage they offer that covers it all. The coverage can save your life and your life savings. Check it out, peaceofmindforrvs.com. Jennifer and I are members, and we urge you to consider it too. Peace of mind for RVs.com. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battle-borne batteries are protected by a 10-year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our battle-borne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back now for the news of the week. And before we get in with the news of the week, uh, may I ask you guys to, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube. This podcast, of course, is uh, uh, audio heard on Spotify and iTunes and uh, Apple Music and Google uh, podcast, all that stuff, but it's also uh, done video-wise in our RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube, and we'd love you to subscribe to that. Uh, if you're watching that, uh, give it a thumbs up, but uh, subscribe. We've been doing the RV Lifestyle now for over 10 years. We've got lots of great videos that uh, will show you places to go, answer a lot of your technical questions, and we just uh, hope that you guys would do us a favor and sign up at RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube. There'll be a link in the show notes for those of you who are watching or reading it, or listening. Lots of ways to do it. But enough of that. We got the RV we news. We got some good news. All of you who are Canadians are going to be so happy to hear this, that the borders are going to open up for recreational travel starting November 8th. So Canada and Mexico 
with proper vaccination, you're going to be able to come in. But a concern is that it has to be the same, like if you got Pfizer, Pfizer, or if you got Moderna, Moderna, or whatever you got, you couldn't mix and match. You, that, not that's quite a, sure about in, that. in the U.S., you're not supposed to mix and match, but in Canada, they mix and match. They count, you know, if you got a Moderna shot and a, and a Pfizer shot, that's, that's, that's fine. In the U.S., not so much. So they're kind of working out what kind of vaccination proof is required. But the, the bottom line is, is that they want that border open. It's been closed since March. March of 2020. Yeah. So, so uh, that's good news for all those in Canada that normally come south for the winter. Yep. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, the, the RV places in Arizona and Texas and Florida are awfully glad to hear that. So uh, November 8th. The border opens. We're not sure about uh, what they're going to require with vaccinations, but uh, we are sure that you're going to be able to get here. So welcome back, Canadian <laughs> snowbirds. <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. We got a really happy story uh, for those of you who are dog lovers, as we are. Yes. Uh, and it, okay, dog lovers. A woman was hiking with her 12-year-old dog and the dog was off leash. This is at Miniwaska State Park in, uh, it's, a, it's a preserve in uh, New York State. And she was hiking with her pet there. And then she heard her dog barking, but couldn't see her dog. And it, her dog had fallen into a crevice and she couldn't get the dog out. And the poor dog was five days before. Yep. And, and the dog, Liza is his name. Yeah. So poor little Liza was barking in five days. I imagine getting very, very hungry. I don't know why they couldn't drop food down. Well, she's they, 12 years old. Yeah, that's that's pretty hard on the, the old girl. Well, they didn't know where she was for exactly. a long time. And then they found out that she had dropped into a crevasse uh, in the park. And uh, somehow uh, she couldn't get out. She was at the bottom. How did she survive? They, you know. Well, they attribute it to licking the moisture off from stones is what... Uh, kept her alive, gave her some water, until... Well, rescuers got onto this and they kept trying to figure out how to do it. And uh, somebody who was very slightly built in petite frames volunteered to squeeze down this crevasse and they did. And uh, they got the dog and Liza's back and Liza's fine. She's 12 years old, so she's, she, she probably rested a lot after this. <laughs> so uh, a happy ending to that. And what a good reminder that don't let your dog go off leash. Your dogs don't know. And uh, you got to keep them on leash. And if you can't climb and hike and have your dog on leash, then maybe you got to leave them someplace else or do a different hike. In other RV news, we've got a great, uh, interesting uh, new RV that has just been introduced. And what is significant is not a single one has been manufactured, but orders are pouring in. And it is a teardrop trailer. It's a little tiny trailer. Uh, it's called the Boulder uh, by Colorado T, uh, T Teardrop. That's the name of the company. Um, so the interior speed in is space five, is five feet ten inches. Five feet uh, by ten feet. So okay. five feet by ten inches. Okay. So it's small, um, and it has a, a galley. Um, it's insulated throughout, and it has seating that you can turn into a bed. Just a small little teardrop. But the significant thing and why it's catching headlines is that uh, it comes with a built-in charging station for electric vehicles. Now, electric vehicles are being introduced everywhere. That's the latest rage, electric trucks, electric cars. And some of them are big enough that you can tow, particularly a teardrop. But I think what people don't know is that when you're towing, your ability to travel is cut in half. If you're towing an electric vehicle, if yeah. If you've got the electric it, vehicle. It saps the energy out of your battery. Right. So this has, uh, I think it's something like 50% of the capacity uh, is lost if you're towing a vehicle with an electronic, uh, if you're towing like a trailer with an electronic vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, but these people, Colorado Teardrop, in that Boulder model, they have built in a charging station. They are ahead of the crowd. So they're ahead of the crowd. And uh, we'll have links to it all on the uh, show notes for this episode, and you can you can find I'm it. I'm sure this is the future. Yep, yep. Speaking of uh, technology and vehicles, there was a, an amazing study that the AAA did that sounds as an alarm for those of us who tend to maybe rely too much on what's called ADAS, A-D-A-S, or Advanced Driver Assistance uh, Systems. You know, that's like lane-keeping systems, automatic braking systems. You know, I've often wondered about that because 
when it storms and uh, your cameras get all covered with sensors, mud and sensors, sensors and cameras. You know, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like they would work, and you know what? They're not working right all the time. It yeah. cuts it down the efficiency, I think, by about a third. Well, AAA did a study, and uh, what, which was interesting, they noted that all these claims about how these systems were so uh, reliable were done under perfect ideal conditions. They weren't done in rainstorms or sleet storms or snowstorms. And uh, what they found out when they tested them over 35 miles an hour in, in bad weather, that um, it, it failed uh, to uh, catch like an object in front of it over a third of the time. So, you know, they weren't as accurate as, as you'd think. And that, that's pretty scary. So it, it, it didn't stop. You know, the rain caused the sensors not to, not to detect stuff. Same with, with lane changing. Well, I guess I shouldn't say this. Do you think, you know, maybe that bought them more time to work out when it's raining and things like that by having testing things in perfect weather conditions? Because wouldn't you think they would test it? Who knows, huh? I that think they... they uh, they've well intentioned it was just an accident not to test it in rain and now here's mud my and snow here's my yeah here's my old investigative reporter cynicism they tested it under the most ideal conditions so they can claim how accurate they are well the truth of the matter is at least according to this study from AAA is that those systems are not that accurate when the systems are not ideal so when you gonna need be, it. you're when gonna you hear really a lot need it. yeah <laughs> you're gonna hear a, a whole lot of that but uh, the system failed to keep vehicles in their la lane 69% of the time when it was not even heavy rain, moderate rain, moderate or heavy rain, 69% the lane changing thing didn't work. And if, so if you get too reliant upon that system, if you're counting on it, bad weather, beware. Yep. Well, let's end this uh, News of the Week segment with a really fun little story. Oh, this is such a good story. Uh, a park ranger at Glacier National Park recently uh, had to return a teddy bear to its owner. Isn't that a great story? You found a teddy bear, then you get to return it to the person who lost it? Yeah, but the thing is, is that the teddy bear has a backstory. Yes. And uh, it, was, it was given to this little girl. When she was adopted. She was adopted from an orphanage in Ethiopia in 2016. Mm -hmm. So they gave her this, it was so special to her. I mean, she didn't go anywhere without this teddy bear. And her family went on a vacation. Last year, and, 2020. Uh, she lost the teddy bear. Hidden Lake Trail, they were on, on Hidden Lake Trail in, in Glacier. And then the ranger, when he was doing what rangers do in the winter time, saw the teddy bear, and you're not gonna, he made it, he cleaned it up, put it in his uh, car. Patrol car, yeah. Patrol car, is kind of a little mascot for him, that teddy bear that he found. And you're not gonna believe this. That so yeah, but he would drive around and people would say, oh look, the ranger's got a teddy bear, and somebody recognized it this yeah, year. A, a relative of the little girl looked at that teddy bear and thought, is that the teddy bear that her uh, niece had lost? And it was. It was, and the bear was reunited to the little girl from uh, Ethiopia, and uh, everybody, the bear, the little girl, the ranger, and all of us who heard this story, we're very happy. And that obviously was meant to be because yep. that teddy bear was found. What are the chances of that? And what are the chances of a relative seeing that teddy bear in the in the ranger's car? It's just uh, that little girl was meant to get her teddy bear back. Yep. All right. When we come back, we've got the RV questions of the week. So stay with us. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Have you had it with overbooked, overcrowded campgrounds? Then check out Harvest Hosts, where RVers can overnight for free at more than 2,400 wineries, farms, microbreweries, golf courses, and attractions. 
Harvest Host is a membership service for those with self-contained RVs looking for unique, beautiful, and peaceful overnight camping experiences across North America. When you become a member of Harvest Host, you can camp for free at all these places. Jennifer and I are Harvest Host members, and we've made so many great memories at Harvest Host locations. There's no charge for camping, and your Harvest Host membership fee is easily made up with just a couple of stays. Plus, you have awesome places to stay. If you use our special affiliate link of rvlifestyle.com slash hh, you'll automatically get 15% off the cost of your membership. That's 15% off, but you must use the special link, rvlifestyle.com slash hh. Welcome back to the RV Questions of the Week, and our first question is from Inka Schultz. Inka writes the following. She says, I... Uh, we really appreciate your podcast and your Sunday evening Ask Us Anything questions and the answers that you guys, you're awesome. Thank you, Inca. You're awesome. Uh, question. Found a something called a Ford Performance Chip. They indicate that it can be used in Ford Transit Class C and it improves gas mileage four to six miles per hour without voiding the warranty. I'm wondering if you've ever considered it, if you know anybody that's used it. Also, I'm trying to understand more about all-wheel drive on the transit and the advantages and disadvantages. I know you and Jen have that, so can you tell me why you decided it was something you wanted? Well, let's start with the all-wheel drive. Why, why did we pick that? We picked it because we live in Michigan where we do get snow regularly. And we camp in the wintertime. And we camp in the wintertime. So for us, it's worth it because uh, we might need it. We don't always need it, but we have it available if we need it. Now, the bad part is it messes with your gas mileage. It does. Uh, we get about 12.8 uh, miles per gallon on our transit. And, uh, you know, it's not great. I got much better mileage on the Sprinter. Um, but, you know, that's uh, uh, all-wheel drive. It, it, and four-wheel drive, they, they, they mess with your, your gas mileage, as Jen said. You may not need it. If you're not going to be camping in the winter, if you're not going to be going doing a lot of boondocking down sandy forest trails like we do. Uh, we just did one, you know, in that middle Tennessee uh, trip that we just told you about at the top. We drove uh, down some pretty rough trails in, in ours. And so I was glad to have four wheel or have all wheel drive in that case so that all wheels have traction. But you may not need it. And uh, that leads us into that mileage question you ask. I was, have not uh, use that device. It's a chip and it, it plugs in, you know, that little, there's a little connector underneath the dash. It's called the OBD diagnostic port. It's like a little, little uh, multi pronged uh, uh, jack or a receptacle and you can plug it in there. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I'll show it to you. It's on <laughs> there. Uh, so you can plug it in. Some people use it for, you know, when you take your car in for diagnostic services or your RV uh, chassis. The, the technology people put that in and they, they can diagnose how everything works. Well, you can put this in and it supposedly pre-tunes uh, and uh, maps the way you use your fuel. I'm making this very simple, but <laughs> I'm a very simple guy when it comes to mechanics. And it supposedly will increase your mileage. There are several different layers of it. The one that gives you supposedly four to six miles per gallon more cost $229. Now you said it doesn't void the warranty and so I looked at the company's website and they wrote something like this. They said, uh, well the vehicle manufacturer cannot void your entire vehicle's warranty due to aftermarket accessories. That's the entire warranty. Due to the nature of warranties and contracts, you as the customer are responsible for ensuring these terms do not void and any part of your vehicle's warranty. Um, while a loss of any vehicle warranty has never happened as a result of the installation of our performance chip products, it says uh, uh, the company, which is called ChipYourCar.com, we'll put a link in the, in the show notes for the episode at RVLifestyle.com. The company will not be responsible for loss of warranty. And here's what they said. This is the part that made me wonder. It says, it is recommended to remove the module prior to service further avoiding potential issues or misunderstandings with the dealer and to protect your warranty. So they say take it out when you take it in for service so that the dealer doesn't see it and say, hey, that's the... So I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical of that. Uh, and I don't think it's a product I would buy. 
But, but you if know, you do buy it, you better take it out before you take yeah. it in for the year. <laughs> you, you don't want your, it just says you don't want your dealer to know about it. Well, you know, I mean, maybe the dealers are looking for any excuse, but still, that just caused me to wonder a little bit about it. So uh, there you go. All-wheel drive, you don't have to have it if you're not uh, driving in snow or, or boondocking and on some And nothing roads. helps on ice. And nothing helps on ice except stay home. Yeah, <laughs> stay home, wait for it to melt. Yep. And uh, as to that chip, uh, I'm not aware of it, although I looked up the link you sent me, and we'll let our, our readers judge, but those were our, our opinions on it. Hey, do you have a question for us or a comment on anything we said? We would love to feature you in the podcast. All you have to do is send us an email uh, at Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. All right, what's next? Well, next we've got the hidden campground gems. Mark Kep yeah. from campgroundviews.com. Is always with us. finds us great places, so I know you're going to want to hear this. So where are we going this week? This week we're going to Alabama, and it's not a campground; it's a community. All right. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Thank you, Mike and Jen, and hello, everybody. Um, we've gotten your feedback. You're enjoying this, and today I'm going to take you to a unique location that is a hidden gem primarily because it's a brand new RV park. But the gentleman that, that created it and built it doesn't call it an RV park, he calls it an RV community. It's located in a town called Theodore, Alabama, which is just southwest of Mobile, Alabama, along the United States uh, southern coast. A beautiful location to go uh, during the winter time and also if you're just traveling through the area. Homestead RV community, what makes it unique is really drive from that name community it's designed for people to come and stay and develop a community with your neighbors and the other folks that are staying at this park it has paved roads concrete parking pads but what also makes it very unique is it has super high speed internet you have um, unlimited bandwidth basically at this park you can stream whatever you want there's no restrictions very very user friendly and what else is unique about this park is that if you want a hot tub He'll actually deliver a hot tub to your site, fill it up with water, and you have your own hot tub at the campsite. Very reasonable rates for a location of, of this quality. Um, concrete pads, big enough for any size RV, plenty of space, nice grass around it, a playground, a pavilion, a pond. Just overall, a really nice RV park or RV community that you can go stay at if you're heading down south this winter or during this next camping season. So Homestead RV Community is our campground of the week, our hidden gem campground of the week. And there'll be a link in the description below for you to go check it out. Thank you, Mike and Jen. Back to you. Well, thank you, Mark. And uh, how do people get more information on that? Well, Mark, like I said, uh, we've got a link to that specific uh, place in Alabama that he suggested. And it, it will put it in the show notes, uh, it's, it's on Mark's site, campgroundviews.com, and if you go slash RVL, for RV Lifestyle 14, campgroundviews.com slash RVL 14, you can uh, take a look at that yourself. And you can also look on Mark's uh, site and see all sorts of other really cool campgrounds. He gives you this 360 degree view, so you really can check him out. Thanks, Mark, we appreciate that. I'm out, I'm so bad. I always like brand new campgrounds where everything's nice and new and fresh. Yes, it is. Well, that's it for episode uh, 367 of Ooh. the RV podcast. And again, all this week we are uh, at the Riverview RV Resort across the Mississippi River. We're looking at it right now from Natchez. Look, uh, Facebook, uh, our Facebook group, RV Lifestyle Facebook group. Uh, we'll have lots of pictures this week. I might not want to go back. You never want to go back. <laughs> yeah. We're Mike and Jennifer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy trails. <laughs>